mysteries and strange places hide beneath the city streets. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Coruscant Nights. Tonight, I am joined by everyone's favorite Mon Calamari slash human, Nikki Sweaters. Yep, Carp's here. Carp's in the house. How's it going? It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Sight. Do you remember what happened to Carp last time? No. <laughs> with with the Dims and with the Names. I remember being on a stairwell. There was a stairwell. And then running back up the stairwell. Yeah, running back up the stairwell. There was a fight. There was a fight. Your brother was involved. This is true. This is all true. I don't true. know if I was fighting with your brother or at your brother. Uh, Carp and Anames discovered the Dims deep underground under a theater, mm -hmm. uncovering some sort of massive structure and almost like an archaeological dig. And they were spotted and ran away and were assisted by our friendly neighborhood, Rikazak Park. And you got a prisoner, uh, Dim as a prisoner, and escaped as off in the distance, the Jedi Temple was burning. Okay, this this describes what I feel like a normal theater experience right now would be like. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, before we get into it, we should roll I have our... a sword, right? Uh, yeah, that's actually the most important part of yeah. the last Yeah, well it is to me. <laughs> I've got a sword, I know that much. Yeah. That's, that's all that you need to remember, really. Before we get started, we should roll our destiny. I'm gonna pick up a white die and roll it. Wow, two light side, two dark side. No. Oh. But, lucky but, for you. <laughs> lucky for me, I got a return policy Somebody, on somebody <laughs> donated for destiny. Was it me? Yeah, it was, it was someone else? Yeah, it was you. Okay. You, you uh, donated to make the entire pool light side. Yes. And you donated enough to add another two points to the pool. Wow. Look at all those points you can't flip. Well, you know, I don't have to add those two <laughs> extra points to the pool, and I'm really just doing them hoping that be generous because you just have so many. <laughs> well, because if you flip one, you still have five. I didn't ask for more. I just didn't want you to have any. It has been about 48 hours since Carp's last grand adventure. The prisoner that the group of you got, Afka's convinced you to give your prisoner over to somebody he says he trusts, which is not common for Afka. Somebody named Sol Dixon. Snoober, Snoober is off. What's my Snoobie up to? Snoober is off chasing down a lead on the Dems, trying to get a little bit more information. What has Carp been up to mm. in these about uh, these two or so days since the Republic turned into the Empire. I feel like, well, first of all, Carp's been looking up a lot of videos on the Holonet YouTube about how to do sword moves. Mm -hmm. And she's practicing them all in her living room. And Is her living room an actual living room, or is it the living room on her Airstream? Oh, that's right. I have an Airstream now. Well, the Airstreams, Does, it, I don't think there's enough space yeah. to do a lot of those moves on an Airstream. So maybe I park the Airstream in front of an alley and then practice in the alley behind the Airstream where it's my little smoke cover. Are you sure you're not, like, practicing on a dock somewhere with this, <laughs> the like, sun setting behind oh, you? <laughs> with, the, with the eye of the tiger playing uh -huh, <laughs> in right. the background. I'm sure in her head that's happening. And, of course, there's been major political changes She's what, what time she has not been spending doing sword moves in the alley while her airstream blocks her from view of the public is hanging out on her message boards, her, her lifeline. <laughs> yeah. Message boards have been very, very active the last couple days. She feels it's like the most popular she's ever been. <laughs> it's all because of the sword. <laughs> Toy, no, I haven't shared that I've got a sword. Okay. On the message boards. Haven't you? That would be an identifying detail. Anyone could see me on the street with a sword and be like, that's Carp. She's got a sword. Mm -hmm. So what is this alley like? Uh, Carp's not one to go into alleys lightly. It's one with a closed... Although, she doesn't want to cut herself off from an, an immediate escape route. Right. Although her escape route is the Airstream. So technically she's got her escape route wherever she goes. 
let's see. Yes, it is. It is, it is closed off. There's a brick or Star Wars brick. Dura Crete. Yeah. There's a, that wall behind her. Mm -hmm. And then there are walls bracketing her to the sides where it's wide enough where she can get a lot of movement in, but not wide enough to feel super exposed. So is it, it's more of an alcove? It's an alcove. Yeah. Okay. It's not a, it's not really so much an alley that runs in between two streets and it's open on both sides, but it's, yeah, it's an alcove. Am I messing up whatever layout you had in mind for mm. whatever you're planning? Nope. She can hear the sounds mm. of a protest down the street. People shouting. People are upset about the quick change in regimes and about chancellors seemingly just mm. grabbing power, proclaiming himself the emperor. Other people are upset about the Jedi being traitors and think they're not traitors and other people think they are traitors and it's just a bunch of people who are not happy about things just up mm -hmm. and above uh above her airstream she can see part of the silhouette of palpatine as a like a big hologram <laughs> giving his big speech about the new galactic empire silhouetted against the sky slowly yeah. doing yeah. bad kung fu moves <laughs> in his regal his regal senatorial garb is he, is he still hood down at this point? Is, or is he, when does he go hood up? You know? What what point does that transition happen? That transition in public, according to Rebels, doesn't really happen. Oh. The hollows tend to show young looking Pal Palpatine even mm. 15 years in the future. Yeah, so he looks just like, mm. just like you know he looks. He's been hollow shot. Just like that version of him. Um, yeah. Yes, he's been hollow shot. So your airstream is sort of blocking your view of this protest right now. Well, I'm shocked that I'm in hearing range of a protest and that I haven't screamed out of there by now. Well, it's easier to hide in a group of people than it is to walk well, alone at night, right? But a, a group of people, you can... She has hid inside can't take a protest them out before. <laughs> Have I? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't... I don't I, maybe I've done it, but I haven't liked doing it. Yeah. That was in the first carp, and you stole a guy's jacket. You fugitive. Do I still it. have it? No. Where'd it go? You dropped it somewhere along the way. Did I say that I dropped it, or I'm should sure I still said have you it? Dropped it. This was three years ago. <laughs> well, if I can't remember the last game, what makes you think I'll remember the first game? Then yes, you dropped it. I don't know. Um, I like to think that it's hanging out in my airstream closet. I think the first roll of the game should be a vigilance check. I have a yellow and two green. Are you kidding? You have a yellow and vigilance? <clears throat> You've been playing with me because too Because it's long. willpower. I have three willpower. It means you have a rank in vigilance. Okay. No, I believe you. Listen, man, you had plenty of time to sabotage this character sheet before you sent me the link. It's going to be against two purples and one black because you are so into... <laughs> I'm into, am, I, am I videotaping myself? Are with you? The, you probably with the intent, are. With the intent of blurring out my face. Yes, I am videotaping myself. With um, I'm going to blur my face out. It's just going to look like the blur under the land speeder in OG mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. New Hope. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smear some Vaseline on the lens. All right. So let's act like I ever remembered what these meant, and then you can tell me what these mean. You got one advantage. Okay. No successes. Let's see. My advantage is that I'm cool. I'm, I mean, I, I guess I'm. So you the don't. The only noise is the protest. It's. Yeah. it's I'm not making my own uh, right. noises while I swing my, <laughs> like making sword swishing through the air noises. You're not making lightsaber noises. Oh no! Am I so <laughs> with a sword? No, because I've never really been that jealous of lightsabers. I just go. Shoo, shoo. Yeah. Well, you don't notice the two people that squeeze around your airstream. Wait a minute! I said it was a narrow alley. My yeah. airstream should be covering, like, front end and back end should be on both sides. How are you gonna get in the airstream? There's a side door. <laughs> How are you? You See an airstream. You don't notice the two people who squeeze into the alley around the airstream. 
Okay, no. They clamber on top of my airstream while my back is turned and I'm facing the other direction, which is why I should never turn my back to my only escape route being the airstream. Okay. So from a different view, we see two people on top of your airstream. Mm -hmm. One of them is a human, and he points at you, and the other one is a Mon Calamari, and she nods to him, and they both quietly climb over the other side. Toward me or away from me? Toward you. Am I taller than this Mon Calamari? Well, you don't see her yet. <laughs> Wait, is my back still turned? Yeah. Oh. Well, I guess maybe one of them scuffle their foot on the metal of my airstream, and it alerts me, right? So... My advantage should be that they're trying to sneak over something metal, and it should be giving them away. Mm, you didn't spot them. But you do hear something as they get in your space, <laughs> in this little alley. You see them... Yeah, we'll, we'll use your advantage so that you see them, but it's too late. They're already here. That doesn't sound like an advantage to me. <laughs> you failed. <laughs> <laughs> you think every non-success is a failure. Uh, yeah, you know, I tend to This think is a really glass half empty <laughs> field you've gotten yourself into. So yeah, you see this Mon Calamari. What, does, what do these two see? with carp. I don't think we've described carp in a long time since <laughs> since the um, black beanie and turtleneck. What does carp look like? Wait, do I saw... well, I'd probably like to... not wearing that I'd like right to now. think I'm wearing that jacket you say I dropped. <laughs> <laughs> you can be wearing a jacket. I guess I'm wearing a jacket, although I keep the beanie. So yeah. You've got a little black beanie. <laughs> yeah, I've got the beanie and a cool, cool jacket. What kind of cool jacket? Um... Like Han Solo's Hoff jacket, which is like uh, blue with with fuzzies. It is it is oh, cold out. Is it cold out? It's coldish. I've always wanted that jacket. If if this is my chance, that's my jacket. Great. Yeah, I'm wearing that, and then also a, it, it would probably make sword fighting a little cumbersome. But it, yeah, it wouldn't be particularly good for that. So what kind of down do you stuff that jacket with? Keto. I, <laughs> I really want to know. Tip yip. <laughs> Perfect. Anything else about carp besides being uh, extremely tall? <laughs> uh, let's see. Carp's a Mon Calamari. I'm a Mon Calamari. You got like orange, bronzy sort of skin. Yeah. Slightly sort of copper modeling on the skin itself. Um, with a hint of red. A hint of blush red. And khakis? <laughs> I, I can see carp wearing khakis. Or, no, did... What did I draw her in that one time? They're, they looked like lab pants. <laughs> she just wearing sweatpants? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> For exercising? Oh, you know what? She in a tracksuit? Yes. <laughs> yeah, she's exercising. She's in a sweat uh, slicking tracksuit. Yeah. Wicking. Yeah. S sweat wicking tracksuit. Her jacket is hanging up on the side mirror of the Airstream. No, I want it to be inside because you're going to make me leave it behind again. <laughs> no, it's inside. It's hanging in the closet. Okay. And as you swing your sword uh, in half a circle and face your airstream, you see these two people. They are wearing what sort of look like traveler's clothes. Almost what you would see on people in the outer rim. Beiges and lots of wrapping and stuff. Not really stuff you see around Coruscant very often. Cloaks or no cloaks? No cloaks. Okay. The taller of the two, the Mon Calamari, is wearing sort of a half cape kind of thing. Not like a Lando half cape, but like uh, almost like a mixture of a scarf and a cape. Escape. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Something that Harp is not going to be able to do right now. Escape. Escape. Ah. The... Maybe it's... Maybe they are the ones who cannot escape. Maybe. The, the human is a little on the shorter side. He looks maybe mid-twenties, clean-shaven, baby face. And he's got almost, his hair is almost this, like, monk's tonsure kind of okay. thing. And the Mon Calamari is at least as tall as Carp. If I don't not, like that. maybe an inch tall. No, no. That's like the probability of a girl being 6'2 and coming across girls who are 6'3. Well, it happens. <laughs> She is wearing similar clothes, and... This feels like a height made out of spite. 
And I just want that on record. Somebody has to be taller than Carp. Well, it, not in her own species. She is wearing similar clothes to the human. She has skin at a similar tone to Carp's, except a little mm-hmm. bit lighter, a little bit closer to white. And <laughs> she's from a deep sea. In her hand is a spear. Oh, like an old school yeah. weapon of my people. Like not even a vibro spear, a spear. Mm. And the two of them, as you flip around, they're not expecting you to flip around. Ooh. And you catch them whispering to each other. The human has his hand near his belt where he spotted dagger. I assume I'm wearing at least one of my blasters as well, right? Can you, are you squeezing that? little blaster into the sleeve of a When you say suit. something's part of my inventory, it has to be part of my inventory. It doesn't. You have your vehicle right there. You probably put some of your stuff in there. Does that sound I, like me, though, I, to I, I not expect, have a thigh blaster on at all times? I would expect Carp to have one of her two blasters on her. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which one is it? Well, this one Snooby gave me is sentimental, so that's my default. Okay. And also, he told me it's the better one, so <laughs> I know that would be the one you would be more annoyed if I had on hand. <laughs> so you've put away your sleeve blaster, the, the one that you call your Oh wait, blaster. no, there's one up my sleeve. Okay, no, I keep but that one. Is your tracksuit, does it have like the elastic Oh, it doesn't really, sleeves? yeah, there's no, yeah, there's there's not a whole lot of room in the sleeves for a sleeve blaster. So, okay. Snoopy's blaster. So what do you do? I do, I'm startled, but I immediately do one of those sort of obnoxious poses that someone who just got a sword does with their sword. Are you pointing it at them? Where, no, where I, I'm kind of, I'm doing the thing where I sort of, I turn to one side, I'm in warrior two, but with a sword. <laughs> and I've got it raised <laughs> to about eye level and it's pointing directly at them. Yeah. That looks threatening. Mm. Do you say anything to these people? Who dares interrupt? She, when she gets into character, she really gets into character. She's yeah. she's method practicing right now. Yeah. The human draws his little dagger and points it towards you. And he says, You dare threaten my Lady Morla? Do I know as no. a native monk Calamorian Lady Mor- Morla? Okay. No. It's not someone... It's not like knowing your state's governor or something, no. right? Okay. You've struck this threatening pose and the, the human has pulled his dagger on you. How dare you threaten my lady Morla? A stray <laughs> loth cat runs by. <laughs> this stray, I was going to say he meows in anger. A uh, little black tuca hops down from one of the uh, fire escapes. You notice quickly before he runs under your airstream mm-hmm. that He's got a little scar over his eye. <laughs> right. <laughs> I immediately, oh man, it's that kind of day. Right? All right. It runs under the airstream and off to safety. Mm-hmm. I think that's very rich coming from someone who snuck up on me. <laughs> <laughs> I really think the manners of the moment determine that I get to be the one who's startled into a defensive position. What do you say? You assume a more defensive position? Um, I make another obnoxious, just learning to use a sword move, where I I raise from my warrior two crouch into a sort of crossbody slant with the sword, where it's kind of protective. Uh huh. But I, I do it. You're in, in a that, defensive stance. Yes, but it's it's done with the really obnoxious slowness. Right, I just can't mm-hmm. be chill about it. Mm-hmm. I've got a sword now, and I, I can't be cool about it. And you say nothing? No. How dare you sneak over my airstream and surprise me? You could knock. The Mon Calamari still has her spear straight up, and she takes a step forward with a hand out towards you. Is it the hand that I'm looking at or the spear? You tell me. We mean you no harm, but we will be taking that sword. <sighs> I don't think I've ever seen someone try to brandish weapons non-threateningly. She's not being particularly threatening, with her hand out towards you and her spear still facing up. But her tone is very presumptive, and I do not like that. I said, you, you're not taking this sword from me. She's still holding the spear. It's not holding. strapped to her back I mean, or She doesn't nothing. really have anywhere else to put it. Like across her back. 
like a long sword. Come on. Those spears, those Mon Calamari spears have a like a collapsible function. Looking like at this one, it doesn't. It looks okay. like it's made of wood and metal. Oh. She she went old school with the harpoon. Okay. Well, uh, no. This is my sword. You cannot have my sword. The little aggressive human says, That sword belongs in our village. The <laughs> Whose village? You'll have to excuse Eamon. Our village sent us up here because, well, we need that sword. People from our town have been looking everywhere, and we just happened to have spotted it as you were brandishing. He just happened place. to have spotted it behind my airstream down an alley with no other exits. You were looking for it. We were looking for it. That is our mission. That sword belongs to our village. How are it you is... able to track it? We spotted you last night. <laughs> okay. Maybe. All right. Let's let's make this make sense. Carp has been one strutting around for the last oh, two days with absolutely. a sword across her back. Yeah. And um, there's no way you've been hiding. I haven't thing. been brandishing it, but I have been sort of angling myself in ways to show it off. Right. Yeah. You went to the Gungan farmers market, and when you were uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he said when you cut open a cantaloupe. I, I'm picturing you're like. I want that Jaforsnip, <laughs> and you point the sword at it, and I want that, please. I'm like every jerk with a laser pointer, except it's a sword. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can't have it. It's mine. I earned this fair and square. By which I mean I took it off the wall of an evil guy at the top of a skyscraper. I do remember that much. You did. It is the weapon of prophecy. Mm. Our village needs it. They're, our people are in danger. What village? There aren't, there aren't any villages on Coruscant. Whether you believe it or not, this is very important to our people. <clears throat> will you give us the sword? No. Then will you at least come with us so that we can explain to you why we need it? Mm -hmm. Well, it is not typically, and this is me thinking out loud, Ascarp, in my... See, I keep saying it's not in my nature to just randomly go off with strangers who beckon me forward, but I Do seem to keep doing it. <laughs> hey. Circumstances dictate. Eamon says, if she won't give it to us, we should just take it. And she says, now, now, um, Eamon, patience. So I sort of angle my hips so that the blaster is apparent. Mm -hmm. I There's shall not. no reaction to the blaster. Well, I don't know why he's not reacting to it. I just think he's being a butthead and sort of doing that tough guy thing where he just merely raises an eyebrow. Yeah, he's just brandishing this little dagger towards you. I He's like one of those really little dogs that will attack someone who's about 20 times its size because my sword is a lot bigger than his and I'm a lot bigger than him. The thing is, you've just been- Don't take this from me. You've been showing off your moves, so he's seen your moves. <laughs> so, he, so he's good. He's, <laughs> he's good with his little dagger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I surreptitiously like flick off the, the recording camera from a, a little remote. Until <laughs> you reach in your pocket. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It's my, it's my, uh, <laughs> the thing that I was using to record, you know, those, um, ring cameras they mm -hmm. got on the outside of houses now? Yeah, it's one of those. It's my security camera I've been using to film YouTube videos of myself, mm -hmm. uh, sword fighting. Well, I don't know if it's the fact that I've got a sword now that makes me speak very formally, but I, I sort of doing another little obnoxious maneuver that... To, like, make a, like, a figure eight Yes. Yes, and then I sort of bring it to attention at my side with an easy ability to bring it back up, but ostensibly no longer threatening or ready to spring into action. <laughs> what, what would you have of me? If you do not believe us that that sword is vital to the survival of our village, at least come with us so that we may show you. I sort of crab walk forward, like I'm back in warrior two pose. And I inch forward a little bit, like like something you would do to something you're trying not to startle into flight. <laughs> as I handle every situation as dramatically as possible, and you should know this by now. I am very aware, especially when Snoober is involved. Is he involved? No. That's a shame. Well, you know, it's what made Snoober love me for the dramatic. It's the crap walk specifically. <laughs> it's the crap walk. Okay. Ooh, wow. So as you approach these two in your sort of half-crab walk thing... <laughs> well, well, still, 
holding my sword at attention. <laughs> the the human who whose name was Amon, he you can tell that he's thinking about going for your weapon, but he doesn't. I sort of do that little warning waggle of my sword at him. Ah uh-uh. ah. He takes the warning. <laughs> the monk Calamari says, "I really wasn't expecting you to come with us that easily. We have been watching you for a little while, and." are quite wily. At this, my ego is a little flattered. The Mon Calamari leads you, s- squeezes by your airstream into the <clears throat> street beyond. Or <laughs> she could just pass through it with the side door. No, people don't enter my airstream ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> I take that back. Fine, I will allow you a foot of space in front of the airstream through which she can squeeze. Yeah. To so get back to the street. She squeezes through, and then you squeeze through, and then Eamon is very... He, he is really trying to be last in line. He, I don't think No, I don't allow he that. He doesn't trust you. I have my limits. I, well, I don't trust him. Why is his distrust... <laughs> why does his distrust get to outweigh mine? So there's a moment of... Oh, no, you go. Like, no, no that, we do. We that, do. Yeah. You go first. No, you, really. Oh, I insist. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I no, I, I insist. Please. I insist more than Amen. you insist. Just go through. And he goes through it ahead of you. Morla leads you through this crowd of protesters. The You can hear the sounds of shouting all over the place, and off in the distance you see the, the shields and white armor of clone troopers trying to maintain some sense of order. And she leads you into another side street. This is all part of town that you know. You've lived here for a long time. You know these streets and alleys pretty well. But she leads you to like a stairway that you've never noticed before. It's very narrow. It's very steep. Is it hidden? It's not necessarily hidden. It's just very unremarkable. It's There are a lot of places in Coruscant that people just overlook all the time. And this is one of them. Hmm. It's dusty. You have another... I have a, such a natural distrust of stairwells yeah. that I'm kind of having to buy this on faith. That carp has never noticed this before. You have another moment of, uh, you go first. No, you go first. I exist. <laughs> with, with Eamon. And you know what? This is a battle of wills. Let's do a battle of well, wills. Well, see, I feel like I should get a blue die because I have the advantage of just being willing to go away. Do I just leave my airstream? Do you just... Is it illegally re- parked? No, it has. It's 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 legally parked, right? I've got street yeah, parking. Yeah, it's legally parked. Okay. You've got a pass for this part of town. Sure, cool. Uh huh. A Look, residential permit. Yeah. Well, let's do a check to see who gives in. Okay. I'll take a discipline or cool. Don't forget about all those nice light side points you've got. Oh, I haven't. Probably cool. Yeah. A yellow and two green. Wow. It's against two purples. I still think I should get a boost because they seem to need me to go with them, but I don't need to go with them. They are making their request for my accompaniment. Okay. I'm willing to walk away. Cool. All right, lucky, lucky die. Which ones are these? Are these Those are advantages. Oh. So you have four advantages, which is great, but two failures. So more like it's about halfway down these stairs while you and Eamon argue about who is going to go first. And I think, well, you, you failed this check, so... No, okay, I'm check. so tired of you describing advantages as failures. No, no, no. Here's the, here's the thing. <laughs> here's how it works. You failed, but good things happen. So, Morla stands there and... My sighs. advantage is she commands him to go first, right? We can do that with okay. your advantages. All right. She turns around and sighs while the two of you are fighting about who goes first. And she says, Eamon, just go first. And he says, yes, they do. <laughs> and he goes first. The two of them lead you down these stairs. And you can still see the sky here. Whether the sky is telling you this the right time or not is a matter for debate. They lead you down through odd paths. You pass by a couple of places that you recognize, but the ways that you're getting there are weird. 
and uh, eventually you come to a metal grate that mm. is wide open and more or less says to Eamon, Eamon, the map, please. He reaches in one of his pockets and uh, actually he sort of undoes the front of his like traveling robe thing and reaches in and pulls out a map. It's paper. Give me perception. Actual paper. Actual paper. Mm. Wow. <laughs> what? See, Mark, who hates doing perception checks because that's the skill everyone bulks up on, likes to do it with Kurt because he remembers that I only have one cunning. You still have a yellow, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's going to be against two purples, and you can always flip to add a green to your pool. No, that's all right. Are you sure? <clears throat> yes. Better chance of success. I don't, I'm not sure what I need to be succeeding at right now. I'm just going to notice some stuff about the current situation. I feel like you're trying to bait me, and no. But what I'm going to do is roll my die individually. Great. Just prolong, ah. prolong the failure. It's a threat. It's a success with a threat. So you notice as he reaches into his shirt and pulls out this map, the map is made of this, like, this green, greenish paper. It looks handmade. It doesn't look old. And under his, under his outfit, you can see that he's got this, like, metal chest plate. So at this point, I think I, Carp, am assuming these two are LARPers, were, and they're just coming from a historical village, you know, where they hand make paper and wear old-timey costumes. Hmm. Morla takes a look at the map and looks left and right and gets her bearings as the three of you head into this tunnel. Uh, it is very similar to the places that you, the places that you went with Kurt Blaster. Okay. There's a little bit of running water in the... My old friend Kurt Blaster. My old friend Kurt Blaster. A <laughs> uh, little bit of stinky running water in the bottom uh, that you're easily able to avoid. Um, the three of you make some lefts, some rights. Carp pays attention well enough that if she needs to turn and run, she can probably find her way out. Yeah. And you come to a hatch that they open, which mm-hmm. opens down into this old... Uh, it looks like sort of an Art Deco um, hover train station. Ooh, okay. But it looks old and disused, <laughs> and it doesn't look like any trains have come through here in a long time. The two of them jump down to the tracks and make their way down these tunnels even further. At this point, I've sort of not... I guess it's kind of sheathed. It's The sword is slung behind my back at this point. Mm-hmm. Until now, I've just been sort of gripping it. Did you grab your jacket on your way uh, out? Yes. <laughs> so you've got your Duh, track, track it's in my Airstream. With your jacket. No, we decided it was in the Airstream okay. closet. Great. Let me have this. I just, I just wanted to know if you were wearing it so that I could like <clears throat> rip it or something. No. I. It's pristine. All the fur is still there. <laughs> it's sitting in my closet and it is the pride of my collection. Great. Uh, as you travel down these tunnels, it begins to get a little bit warmer. And Morla takes off that... A little humid. A little humid. A little clammy. Yeah. She takes off that uh, scarf cape that she had and bundles it and stashes it away. The three of you come to what appears to be a dead end. And... Lucky I'm behind them. Yeah. The wall in front of you has sort of a circular motif on it. And... Morla traces her fingers along some lines that, to you, look like some kind of... There's some technology behind this door. But she traces her fingers along these lines, and they glow as she traces them. And the door moves backwards and rolls aside. And you're hit with sunlight from the other side. The three of you enter this space, and it seems huge. It seems like impossibly large. The ceiling <laughs> is emanating a glow like like sunlight and stretching out in front of you there are what look like farms growing kelp on like on deck. Thanks for listening to this episode of Coruscant Nights. Coruscant Nights is a production of Nightcast Creative. To find out more about us and our projects, visit nightgascreative.com. Thanks to Nikki for playing on these episodes. 
For more of Nikki, check out the Other Place podcast or visit nikkismetters.com.